Oh, horrible. Accidents every day. Yesterday, three high school students killed on the road. The day before that awful factory accident. I get jittery worrying about my own family. Who doesn't? And most accidents are due to carelessness. Funny thing, doctors seem to be able to get sickness and epidemics under control. But no one is able to stop accidents. Yes, the city has a mighty tough job ahead if it wants to teach people to be more careful. People take too many chances. They just don't think. Yes, too many people do take chances without thinking. To combat this, federal, state, city, and lay organizations have joined to educate people toward carefulness, to cut down the enormous number of accidents due in the main to downright carelessness. Today at every turn, the public is warned of ever-present danger. These constant reminders are doing a splendid job at urging all of us to be more alert. Unfortunately, there are too many people who forget too easily, and many individuals who take reckless chances at the expense of more cautious citizens. The result, an accident rate so great that officials are being forced to ask for more drastic laws to curb criminal carelessness. To the public health official, the comparison of accident figures is strikingly revealing. While the battle against disease and epidemic gradually is being won, in contrast, the accident toll charts an undiminishing grim line of needless death. In one year in the United States, 10,500 people died from influenza. Meningitis claimed 1,700 lives. Poliomyelitis accounted for 1,200 deaths. The year's heavy toll of tuberculosis took 53,000 lives. Deaths from other communicable diseases totaled 27,000. But accidents in a single year claimed 100,000 lives, far exceeding the death toll of all communicable diseases combined. The death figures are small compared to the whole story. What would you do if you face this situation? This is a time to be calm and deliberate. Yet seconds may count now. They mean the difference between life and death. How can he stop her bleeding? What should he do first? Should he be pulled to the roadside? Wanting to help, but terrified because he does not know what to do. Would you know? With your knowledge, would you really risk dealing with this situation? Will they die because of his faith? What if she has a broken leg? If only someone were here who knew first aid to help until a doctor comes. If, if, lives depend on that if. How many people face life unprepared for emergency, depending on others' aid, chancing someone always will show up to handle their difficulties, someone else. Fortunately, there are people who, appreciating their duty to others, manage to prepare themselves with the know-how to meet ordinary emergencies, a true responsibility of good citizenship that none too many of us think about. saved her life. Good fortune in the form of a person who knew first aid, knew what to do, controlled the hemorrhage before the ambulance reached the scene, saved her from bleeding to death. Most people believe they know what to do in case of an accident. Our observation is that unless they are first aid trained, they do not know. Except for ambulance attended cases, of 50 patients brought in here with fractures, perhaps 
Only one is splintered. Burst butter, lard. And this often leads to infection. People try to help in an emergency. They mean well. But untrained people just don't do the right thing. Yet a little real knowledge of first aid gained so easily by attending a free instruction class would help to save many families much misery. Today and every working day, at Red Cross classes throughout the country, serious-minded men and women, young and old, are gaining priceless knowledge of first aid to cope with most emergency situations. If we expect others to help us or our families in time of crisis, we too should be qualified to help them. It is laudable to learn first aid so that we can help others. And it is elementary common sense to know first aid for our own family protection. And you'll be surprised at how much there is to learn. You won't learn diagnosis at a first aid class, but you will learn to check where principal injuries are and how to protect those parts. Advances in medicine have changed many old customs. You will learn of the changes. This Red Cross training will fit you to give proper first aid using safest methods recommended by eminent doctors. As you learn more about lacerations, broken bones, shock, burns, you will become more safety-minded. You will guard against needless accidents. And being on guard prevents many accidents. Industry has its accident problems. Safety experts are working constantly to eliminate unnecessary hazards and to fight carelessness. Vigilance is the rule among employees. Yet, despite precautions, there were two million accidents in industry last year. The cost, 46 million workdays. Economic loss, two billion dollars. A major factor in cutting down the accident rate in many plants is the introduction of Red Cross first aid classes. There is no guesswork in evaluating first aid instruction in industry. The records of plants, large and small, tell the same story. First aid trained people have fewer accidents. Practical knowledge of what to do before the doctor comes saves many lives each day. Proper first aid practice helps minimize injuries. In developing safety-mindedness, it tends to prevent them. First aid classes are logically a part of good safety campaigns. Industrial organizations, large and small, echo their approval. High on the list of accident breeding places is the farm. That supposedly peaceful life we read about is actually fraught with daily danger. Farm families have more accidents than any other occupational group. With doctors and hospitals many miles distant, with immediate care and long transportation often necessary, farmers need first aid education much more than most people. Agricultural organizations now urge that at least two persons on each farm qualify in first aid. Farmers have responsibility for their families and their hired help too. Among children of all age groups, accidents lead as a cause of death. Educators are presenting courses in safety and first aid to impress students with hazards of carelessness. It is hard to teach children to be careful. They're full of life 
and sometimes reckless when at play. School training cannot promote safety without reminders from home, too. Constant hints that children should be smart enough to avoid accidents. Add one more to the thousands on thousands of home accidents happening each day. Home, you'll be surprised to learn, is one of the greatest danger zones of all. An accident in your home affects a loved one. Here, your ability to give prompt first aid is of precious value. Are you prepared? But where knowledge of first aid is of the greatest importance is on our nation's roaring highways. As each day sees steadily increasing traffic, each day's accident menace grows greater. Think of it, accident fatalities far beyond the death toll of our last two wars combined. Familiar scene, Junior borrowing the family car. Dad and mother cautioning, now drive slowly, take it easy. If these parents only knew, more effective than warnings for youngsters, actual Red Cross first aid instruction and studying about critical injuries punches home the necessity of being more safety-minded. The open road in a fine day. Warning? Hmm, just another sign. Better go slower, Junior. Remember those newspaper headlines? Ah, that's other people. Poor drivers. Not Junior. He can outdrive anyone on the road. Luckily, most drivers are courteous and careful. Good drivers usually are. But Junior, what about other innocent people you jeopardize? Let them worry. Ice going, fine car, sleek, smooth as a jet plane. See, Junior can pass any car on the road and with power to spare. Junior, as a driver, you think you're tops. But there are other drivers who think they're tops. Accidents can happen anywhere, anytime, to anyone. When old people die, it is sad. But when youngsters are crippled, youths with lives of promise and achievement unrealized, it is even more tragic. It takes more than sympathy to help injured persons. It may be some time before a doctor can be procured, and these youngsters need help urgently. It is here that Red Cross training pays big dividends, for it is only first aid trained men and women who know what help safely can be given before the doctor arrives, men and women who have taken this training because of their feeling of obligation to their families and to their fellow men. Red Cross has prepared many of your neighbors for emergency to aid the injured during those long, anxious minutes before professional help can reach them, to help someone's loved one in pain. Who knows, perhaps someday, someone in your family. Such help is heartening, but the record is frightening. 10 million accidents a year in our homes and in industry, on our farms and on our highways, at work and at play, accidents to our neighbors, accidents in our own family. Every passing hour, 1,100 more people being injured in need of quick aid, trained aid. This is the nation's problem. It is the responsibility of every community leader, and it is your problem and mine. Red Cross classes are ready to give you the know-how to meet emergencies. Everyone should share the responsibility of knowing what to do so that proper help for the injured always will be quickly available. Sometime, Somewhere, with the nearest doctor miles away, another person's life will be in your hands. You should be prepared for that critical moment. Remember, every day, everywhere, danger is your companion.